Hi, welcome to the Litmus Test for the Visual Arts episode. We're here with King of Sculpture on the Central Coast, Cole Henry. <laughs> We're in his amazing workshop, which is, he says he can build a rocket out of all of this stuff. Um, thanks for having us, Cole. Fine, fantastic. Let's start from the beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> How did you get into it? Where were you born? Oh, look, I, uh, where was I born? I was actually born in Gosford Hospital. <laughs> But I lived in Bridgman for a long, all up that way for a long, long time. My mother um, was a little bit transient um, and ended up in Hornsby. Yeah, but um, I, I was always creative. I just, I didn't know that. I still don't really think I'm creative because it's um, something that just comes out of me. But I, I, it was just that sort of stuff was always there. I was always making something or I had this vision I'd be an architect at some stage when I was six. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I used to build mud houses and drive my cars underneath the tunnels and wonder why the tunnels fell down <laughs> so it was, it was just that intrigue so and the art stuff just came to me I, um, when I was about maybe 17 16 when I had my license and I crashed my car and my mother said because I didn't have a father my mother said um, there's a friend I know is a panel builder going he'll t let you fix your car because I had no money and neither did she she was a war widow and <laughs> three sisters as well two sets of twins oh wow <laughs> So my mother was a bit crazy, but <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. So I, I went off to this guy and, and he showed me how to fix my car and you know, on the weekend. And he said to me, "Would you like a job?" And I was doing one. He said, "Well, you could be an apprentice panel beater." I didn't even know what a panel beater was at all. I had no understanding of that stuff. And so I just fell in love with doing that because it was things that you know, it taught me to weld and. You know, it's so many things. You know, panel beaters, good panel beaters, have to be very innovative because there's no book that tells you how to do it. Right. Know? And so that was um, a really good grounding for me. I, mind you, I was, was making art at that stage, but didn't really know. What were you making? Oh, I was, yeah, I was always doing something, um, but you know, painting and you know, watercolours and goodness knows what. I just enjoyed all that sort of stuff, but it was a secret of mine. I didn't tell anyone, you know. Right. <laughs> and so but from the, panel beating, what was well, your next kind well, of Well, the panel beating thing, I actually topped the state in panel beating, had, had my wow. own business, because I was actually, I must have been 18, and, and I said to this guy, no, I, I couldn't afford to, because it was one pound, two and sixpence a week or something, was <laughs> your pay, <laughs> going back a bit. And he, um, I said, I'd have to do something else. He said, well, you can work here on the weekends and do foreign orders, they like used to call them. And so I did. And so I had my own business running in conjunction with my apprenticeship, mm. which was incredibly successful. Um, and I just enjoyed it. And then when, as soon as I finished my apprenticeship, which is a fourth year thing, I actually became a TAFE teacher and I specialised in doing, um, building cars, old cars, you know, showing people how to shape metal and form stuff. And so these skills that I developed as a sculptor and a panel builder were just just meshing together, you know. Just and I didn't, I, I knew it. I didn't know. You know I didn't realise what it was that was driving me. Yeah. So that from there it just went on. Yeah. So. So you understand metal, obviously. Oh yes. Was that were you <laughs> making sculptures out of metal at the yeah, time? Yeah. yeah. And actually, interestingly, I used to teach artists who used to come to the t TAFE courses in TAFE in at night because I used to do a lot of knife night courses with this hand forming courses we used to do, and we get all these um, unusual people um, arriving that were artists, not not restorers or panel Right. Men. And so these people used to love going through the scrap bin and finding old bits of weld and <laughs> all that sort of stuff. It was quite amazing. So I was dealing with artists from a you know, really young age yeah. and, and actually mentoring them without, also without understanding. Because mm. these people, a lot of people, a lot of artists have no skills. Right. Everyone's got the ideas, but no, you know, to put it on the ground and physically get it there, the engineering, the, every, everything about it is just much more than, you know, and then when, when I do my bigger work, six, seven metre tall stuff, I have to design those in my head before I even start. Right. And make sure it'll work so that, you know, there's this sort of compromise, you know. What other qualifications did you have? Um, yeah, so that, that was a big part of my life. I actually topped the state in tape, my tape courses yeah, too and great. all that sort of stuff. But, um, and, and it was never a big deal to me. It just sort of happened. It was, I was like, my, yeah, people used to say, oh, you're good with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good with the brain too. Yeah, so, um, and then I, I did, I ended up, because I was a TAFE teacher, actually ended up being um, doing a degree, teaching degree, as part of the TAFE thing, you know, so they need to, because they used to get 
people who could do stuff and actually get them a degree rather than the other way around, get a degree and then try and figure out how to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so um, TAFE don't do that anymore. They've lost it completely. Yeah, so I had that teaching degree and, and then in, in TAFE there was an opportunity to do so many other courses because TAFE was free in those days. So wow. I'd be down in Sydney and between my classes I'd have a bit of time so I'd enrol in always. So I used to enrol in every art thing I could ever get into, you know, foundry course, all, all this stuff that was available. Uh, it was just fantastic. What and is it, foundry? Uh, well, bronze, making bronzes and that sort oh, of stuff. Wow. Yeah, I have a little foundry here which I don't use anymore. But, but that sort of stuff was so, you know, for, for me, it's such a shame to see education not doing that stuff anymore. Because it just, for, for me as an educator, because I really am, um, one of the things I think is really important is not what you learn, it's how you feel when you walk out. And that whole idea of your self-esteem is so important, you know. And those old courses that TAFE used to do would give you an opportunity to go and learn to sew or cook and weld. You know, right. And the next thing you're welding your cakes, cakes together. <laughs> yeah, who'd have thought of that? <laughs> you could sell those, Dale. <laughs> but it was, it was just that sort of stuff, you know. So, yeah. So, and then because of that also, my, my degree with um, teaching, then we had to do other stuff. So I actually did a, another degree at, in, um, up at Armadale, or parts of it. And then also... Um, what was that in? Oh, it was a whole lot of stuff. It, it was just TAFE, uh, as a TAFE teacher, you, you were expected to lift your game at all times, you know, so they expected you to do this stuff. And not all teachers did that, but the opportunity was there to do it, you know, yeah. so I just loved it. So I, I, did, I did a thing, a, a, a science degree, or part of a science degree, which is all about human, um, you know, <laughs> all sorts of stuff, which... So if you get a sore leg, I can tell you how to fix it. Yeah. Well, I've already <laughs> heard your story about how you fixed your own finger. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah so, um, and then I also, I think it was, I don't know, maybe at least 30 years ago, probably, I just thought, I really need to, because um, all my skills as an artist were gained from my initiative, you know, I had no real formal training, although I'd, I'd done a lot, a lot of courses, you know, ceramics and goodness knows what. But I didn't actually see them as actually honing my understanding of what real art was. Uh, so I started, a, a, did a course up at Newcastle Uni, there was a degree up there. Mainly so I could use their foundry because it was free. <laughs> and then I, then I, I went up there because I was playing with bronze casting, which is incredibly expensive and time consuming. And I decided I'd meld the com commercial way of um, casting bronzes, which is in sand. Um, and then put wax in sand, which no one, had, no one had ever thought of doing. Because wow. I do, I do, I'd, like I'm always looking at quicker ways or better ways to do stuff. Yeah. So, so I spent three years up at the uni, um, not interested in doing the degree, but having a great time. And, and I, they still use me as a reference to, of safety, because because <laughs> I blew up a, I blew up a dog. <laughs> I made this big bronze dog in this because I'd done some small processes because it's not supposed to not supposed to work what I was doing and I did some small ones and everything was good and then I did this big one and a mate of mine up there who's still a good friend a great sculptor um, he he and I actually did this thing and it weighed we could only just lift this big wall of sand I had a big dog in it and, and it, we were so excited that it actually worked because you know, as I said it shouldn't work and we thought we'll cool it down real quick. And they had a big cast iron bath up at the uni, and he and I went oh, and put this big lump of steel of bronze in there, that, which was still probably at about 800 degrees C. Oh. <laughs> and so the moisture of water permeated through the sand, steam heat, superheated, and went boom <coughs> and blew this bath to p pieces. <laughs> the, the university canteen was about 300 metres away, and a big chunk landed in the canteen. <laughs> Both of us were there for two days, <laughs> but he was, he was so lucky because we just dropped it off and he stood up and said, geez, that was heavy. And as he stood up like that, boom, this stuff yeah. blew up in us. Yeah. So you could have lost your head. We could have, but I didn't. But you did. And he didn't. <laughs> so now it's funny. But they, well, <laughs> well, it was funny at the time too. It was hilarious because <laughs> the only time the lecturers got, actually got off their ass and rushed, don't repeat that. <laughs> it's on <laughs> no, film. No, <laughs> too late now. <laughs> no, it was, they were really good up there, but the, the uh, head guy, a guy called Baza, he came running and thought, you know, oh my God, we're blowing the place up. <laughs> yeah, so. Like science experiment. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. when did you start making money from your art? Oh, two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, look, it's, uh, I don't do it for money. My wife I just asked her that question. If you really want an honest answer, I probably, I started teaching here, because um, I've been here for a long time, I, um, teaching here maybe 35 to 40 years ago. Um, and I just thought, look, I'm, I'm a teacher. I should be, a, you've only got to be one page ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I, was, I started doing WA, uh, WEA courses here. Right. and I, I really I quickly realised that that you know, working for someone else was not my thing so I, sta I started doing it and so we, we never advertise these classes but we get so many people because the deal is here I, I don't actually say today we're all going to do ahead <laughs> and this is the way we're going to do it everyone's on their own journey and so it's yeah it's a a bit of a nightmare for me. We run these classes from about nine in the morning till four in the afternoon, having a lovely lunch. Most people are here at eight and don't leave till five <laughs> and longer. Just probably happy to have a space. Well, it's part of the space, but also, yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a problem solver for them, really. Right. Um, and, yeah, I'm a mentor and all that sort of stuff because we had quite a few mentor people coming through the place as well. Mental or mentor? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely both. That's part of the part of the requirement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, yeah. These classes we run are always um, incredible, and and the people that have come out of this place in 30, 40 years, it's it's quite astounding. You know, they've they've so many professional artists who've been tainted by my <laughs> my my enthusiasm. If they it. keep coming back, they're not tainted. Well, <laughs> and and yeah, we have one lady that's been coming for forty years. Wow. Every every week. I mean, we they hate us because every we don't always work because if I'm busy doing stuff, I have to have time off. Yeah. And they hate that, but I'm generally we generally do about thirty weeks a year. Wow. Thirty Fridays. So and and at the moment we've got I don't know fifteen people come and and most of those people exhibit professionally. Right. all around Australia so it's fantastic to see that stuff. That's great it and is. are they all in part of the Greens as well? The Ah uh, yeah Greens? they enter into that stuff. And yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah different uh, different uh, uh, students they're not students but the, the different groups of people there they're, they're here for different reasons you know and, yeah. and some people are here just it's their day off and they enjoy making art and other people are on journeys where they want to become a highly professional sculptor and, and be able to do public arts and that sort of stuff so there's a whole gamut of people yeah we often get kids from HSC and that sort of stuff to help because not too many teachers can actually yeah <laughs> file yeah you know, get stuff to stand up that's the thing <laughs> to make it stay there is the yeah. problem you know yeah the, uh, you can make it out of cardboard that's easy but to make it actually to go somewhere and maybe get sold right yeah well sculpture on the green is that extra element of being outside yeah, to survive. yeah. Well, they they, yeah. they they're generally out there for a couple of months. Yeah. So that, that's thing, yeah. So the, the question was, I oh know, well, the question was, do I make money? So I've made a little tiny bit of money from teaching. You know, it's not really. <laughs> if I think a dollar per hour, it's not very good. <laughs> and then about, um, I, I did some uh, public art in my earlier career, but it was sort of spasmodic and it was, um, you know, opportunistic. It just happened. And then about 15 years ago, I actually said to my wife, "I'm because my, my, my eldest daughter is now 43, I think." Um, and so they, you know, kids take up a lot of your life, and I was quite happy to <laughs> be involved with that part of it. And I just said, 15 years ago, look, I'm going to start doing these public works. So I, I've actually, uh, I'm, in my head, I'm incredibly successful for the one most important reason. Um, I've got so much background, you know, I've built houses, I've, I've dealt with um, commercial stuff, you know, done subdivisions, working with council, you know, all that sort of stuff. So councils, when they want to work, they want to know that the thing will be there on time, on budget, end of discussion, you know. And it's a horrible thing to say, but possibly the art is not the important thing. They just want to be seen as doing the right thing. Yeah. And then they don't want to have any complaints. So. Uh, my competition might be a young kid who's just come out of uni who's got this fantastic idea, but I don't know what to do with it. How would it go on the ground? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> do we have to dig a hole? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that oh. sort of stuff. Well, they don't, yeah. you know, that's probably not, you know, universities don't teach that. Right. They teach the idea, the conceptual stuff, and it's, it, which is incredibly important. 
and that um, conceptual stuff then is developed into some practicality and that that's the giant size leap to be able to get it on the ground yeah <laughs> and stay there <laughs> and stay there yeah, well for me because I, I i hate to think of i'm an old-fashioned sculptor because i don't think i am but but for me if sculpture doesn't uh, yeah the word sculpture really means for me something that is long-lasting artistic you know will cause people to question stuff uh, all that sort of stuff um and so yeah it's pretty hard not to for me not to, to when i see a bunch of garbage bags tied together you know ephemeral work which is but it should be called ephemeral sculpture and yeah. really noted that yeah. as opposed to sculpture as opposed to a whole lot of you know installation and all this other stuff yeah. and performance and yeah they're all entertainment that's right <laughs> but it's all it all seems to be listed under sculpture and it confuses the public yeah absolutely confuse them because they you know they go down to sculpture by the sea for instance yeah and there's this beautiful stainless steel thing or a big marble work and for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and a bag of a couple of bags of plastic bags <laughs> hang on <laughs> what's, what's going on here <laughs> yeah, what's but, the craziest material you've ever used uh i've, I've done plastic bags <laughs> <laughs> I, I look. I, I'm. Uh, it's a bad thing to say on camera, but I'm a bit of a whore, you know. I, I, any any opportunity, I'll take it. Um, I'm particularly. I have done a lot of um, sort of. I, I can when on my uh, CV I actually say I'm not an imitator. I'm, I'm an innovator. Right. And I really think that is wants to go on my headstone because <laughs> for me, no, for me, it's not an issue about. Um, doing what someone's done for the last 5,000 years, you know, yeah. carving marble. I want to find a different way to carve the marble and right. stuff. And so I did, I did invent <laughs> this stuff that I, I called cold cast. And hang on, now I've got to think of it, was uh, cold cast and pure glass is the, is the medium. Right. And because as a sculptor, you've also got to be a magician and a, and a, <laughs> a I don't know, entrepreneur. And, yeah, other, what, as a, any artist, you've, you've got to have this secret stuff, you know? And so for me, I see it as magic. You know, people, when they see my thing standing up and the grass is growing around the bottom, how'd you get that there? I'll, talk, I'll diverse. I did these pipes, plastic pipes, six metres tall. I've sold about I don't know, 10 or 12 sets, including overseas, of these big sculptures. They won prizes, all sorts of stuff. All they were were plastic pipes. I cut them, slid, slid them, and heated them up in a barbecue I found on the side of the road and squished them up and bent them and made all these sexy curves and put a little thing on the top and, and painted them bright colours. Right. Anyway, so the, this particular, <laughs> uh, remind me of what I was talking about before, but this particular um, work. I'd put in an exhibition up in um, Queensland and actually won the twenty or thousand dollar prize for the thing. And when I'd finished putting them in, these three ladies walked past. It was late in the afternoon, and she came over and because they're plastic pipes, they just sit on the ground, six metres tall. And she said, "We are just talking about how do you make those stay there?" And I said, "Well, I hand, I just hold them until I go and check the wind and that sort of stuff, and I get them balanced and leave them there." And she said, oh, thank you very much, and walked away. And she went, I hear up the, on the foot bus, she said, you know what, they're all balanced. And they walked away, isn't that amazing? And they just... <laughs> <laughs> and I think, well, that for me is just the Funny. answer fans. If people can't see how it's done, if they walk away with this mystery, this magic... You are magic. <laughs> I am magic. He's a magic. How did he do that? They just stand there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> They had three big steel poles that were smashed into the ground. Right, right. <laughs> she didn't see that bit. <laughs> but that's fine. But that's good. You're, you're amusing people and educating, see? Well, it is. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just what art should do. Yeah, I forgot what we were talking Actually, about as well. So well don't worry. The, the amusing part is really important because mm. I think um, too many artists take themselves far too seriously. Right. And they get, you know, their work gets a bit dark and, you know, I mean, there's, there's a place for that sort of stuff. But I, I just find humour in art is what the average person can mm. relate to or one of the things they can relate to you know, is get there, get there and think that's, geez, that's funny yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, a, when, a, koala bear, a, when a, a polar bear is standing on its hand you know one right. hand <laughs> like cool. licking an ice cream or something <laughs> Jeez, that's funny <laughs> so you were talking about overseas you've done a bit of work that's gone overseas yeah yeah, uh, yeah. well we actually I've been overseas a couple of times and, and the first time we went over I dragged my wife out of here but children were relatively young I think 17 was the oldest and my son was only about 12 and I dragged her out of the country saying I'm going over to 
find out a bit about sculpture. It was actually when I was doing the university stuff up in Newcastle and, and I was thinking the, the, the stuff I was getting from university was not enough for me. I, I needed mm. to go and feel what other people were doing. So well, I organised three months out of my life and, and, as I said, dragged my wife over, screaming, oh, I've got to get back to my kids. <laughs> but anyway, and uh, we, I just walked around the Europe um, telling people I was a sculptor from Australia. And it was just the most amazing thing because in those days, like I'm talking you know, maybe 25 years, 30 years ago, in those days, people didn't really know anything about sculpture. No one ever talked about my sculptures. If they walk, if, if some Australian or English person came into my house, they would just not look. Because <laughs> I've got hundreds and hundreds of sculptures in my house. And so uh, they wouldn't look at it. Never, no one would ever comment. If you've got a European person, they would always say, oh, so you're a sculptor, yeah, and they'd want to know about it. So over in Europe, I, this is a joke, don't get me wrong, but, we, but if I introduced myself as a sculptor, people would actually say, come home and sleep with my daughter. It was a joke, it was oh. a joke. But the, over there, they're so <laughs> revered. Right. Unbelievably, people just are so, look, just sleep with my daughter, who cares, you're, you're, you're a god. Yeah, right. Almost. It's, it's a joke, I it's know. a joke, it I didn't know. happen. But, but that whole feeling that, that people over there just absolutely were, because so, of their incredible tradition that we don't have. Yeah. That was just, is in everybody's head and it's just part of them, you know, they're right. part of their ethos. And, and did they it, say, I'll oh, come and meet this person? Yeah, and, so yeah. that, that uh, took me into a whole lot of places. So I, I ended up working with people in different foundries and carving stuff and um, uh, probably my f best thing that ever happened. We turned up at a, because I, I was in France and I don't speak French and I heard vaguely this thing about a symposium. At, right. at, at this town, because I can, I, I have all these French uncles, so I can pick up bits of French. You know? <laughs> and I, I pick, put together there was a symposium at a town on Thursday, <laughs> and the town was. I was like, "Where's that?" She, so we looked. We had a big map. This big. <laughs> so my wife got this map out of the car. I was just up here. So off we went, to, and I got to the thing, and I just walked up to the gate. And it was, these symposiums, they actually allow the artists to go in for maybe a month or a six, you know, a couple of weeks to make the work, and then they have a show. And yeah, so th this uh, I just walked up to the gate and I said, "Oh, I'm Cole Henry from um, uh, from Australia, sculptor." Oh, come in. <laughs> they just thought I was one of the artists, <laughs> which I wasn't. So I just wandered around, have a lovely time talking. There was probably fifty really well done sculptors there, and talking to them. And this one guy just happened to like me, and he was doing plastic bags. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was well ahead of himself, but he was an architect, and he actually designed the um, the ice rink thing you know, the, the, in the nineteen seventy five Olympics or something. Well, I don't know oh, what it was, cool. uh, which is actually a, a big um, a Viking boat upside down, designed oh. on that thing. Yeah. And he designed this thing, and he, so he he said, "Oh, do you want to help me do my work?" So. I got my name on his his work and oh, uh, great. so that was my really my first international <laughs> thing, which we then went back and stayed with him and all sorts of stuff. So uh, he yeah, made th some good friends. Uh, well, it's those opportunities because if you don't go, if you don't open your doors, yeah, they don't come. Those sort of things just don't happen. So. And you've since taken tour groups over. No, to Italy, I saw no. Italy tour oh, group 2013. Yeah, well, um, no, no, we went for a, a tour. Right. Of that sort of stuff. Now, I, I actually, um, I guess you could say I, I found some, well, I had people that met me and we we took them to things, but it wasn't a conducted tour. No. Oh, cool. No. Okay. Yeah. And I've, I actually, you're, I've, I went over to China. I was asked to go to China to talk to um, all the professors over there to, uh, about abstract sculpture, which nice. I thought was pretty funny. That's cool. <laughs> and, and all these people in the in the hall, I mean, they just they, once again they come home and sleep with the daughter. No, <laughs> but they. I don't mean that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but they. Um, I have two daughters. So I would hate that to happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, so there was these uh, uh, amazing sculptors in China who would carve a mountain and you know, have 400, 4,000 people carving the mountain and they'd be in charge of carving some face. You know, that's, that's the sort of stuff they do. And there I am making my little sculptures, <laughs> telling them what abstract sculpture was. And wow. after we had this lecture, they all came up to me and wanted to talk to me. And, and not one, but probably 20% of them made comments like, we are so overawed by what you do 
because everything you do is out of here. Right. Everything we do comes from the party. Right. They're told that they have to yeah. carve this thing and it must be this and the tradition. And so yes. this woman who did these beautiful big stone sculptures, she said, no, that's a formula. We have to stay to that formula. We can't vary it. We can't you know, give it a big nose or, mm. yeah, it, that, that's not allowed. So we don't, so we don't have that freedom that, it's, and they just saw me as this, <laughs> that's <God>. not, <laughs> boy, he's weird. <laughs> but he's got the freedom to be weird. Freedom, yeah, absolutely. They it was, it was a that. real eye opener to me yeah, yeah. To, to see that sort of stuff. Because they, yeah, I mean, they're highly skilled people, um, and they're also highly in, in, innovative and imaginative. But they held back by their tr their tradition. I mean, China for me was incredibly. I think that's changing right now. It's, it's yeah, big changes happening in China. Yeah. yeah. And what's the funniest backstory to a piece that you've had? You had any strange? Oh, the ladies who walked off with the pipes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, Oh well, it's a funny one. I I started this journey. That's where, where we got sidetracked. I started to do this thing, coal cast and pure glass. This is right. That's where the magician came in. Yep. It reminds me of Dave Allen. He used to wander off in a. Do you remember him? No. no. Comedian for way back. Uh, it would take him half an hour to tell one joke, but fit right. in another forty in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> so the, this coal cast and pure glass stuff was um, is simply a resin, and the glass fibre in fiberglass is pure glass. So I thought I'd just up it a bit and call it coal, coal, yeah. C-O-L, not coal to cast, because that's a product you can buy, but coal cast, being my castings, it, with pure glass. So um, what it was, was basically a type of fiberglass thing. It took me five years to perfect this technique, because you know, these things just don't happen overnight. And so I I'd, I'd started doing this sort of stuff where I actually have to make, a f if it was you, I was going to make because I did, ended up doing a lot of figurative works and they looked like spider webs really. Mm. Um, so there's a figure of you, what I would actually have to do is probably make you in clay and make a mould off it or cast you. So I had a lot of people come to me and I, I would actually cast them so they got the exact copy of themselves as a spirit person or whatever. <laughs> anyway, the, the funny thing is that I often go out to primary schools and, and talk about stuff and I always put these pictures of, I call them the stringy people, because it looks like little bits of string, and I tell them about this and the little kids are saying, you know, say, how do you do that? You know, so I, what I do is I, and I always make the biggest kid in the class stand up, you know, go out here. So what I do is I get this special string that goes hard and I tie it all over you and light it and then I pour acid over you to get you out. <laughs> <laughs> and all the little kids go, <laughs> <laughs> then I tell them it's a joke, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> After they're already going. I get so many laughs from that. <laughs> that's fantastic. So that's your backstory? Well, Crazy backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell them anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so how do you feel about art on the coast? Um, it, there's there's some, a hell of a lot of really good artists, all sorts of artists here. Mind you, um, I know painters all so I'm oh, not this old story again, but you know, I'd get over the top when the you know, painters say, oh, I've had a terrible day. I know all these famous painters, oh, so, such a bad day. My, my brushes went dry. The year sheet, I just cut my finger off. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, for me, sculpture is such a intense, incredibly physical thing to do. You know, the art in sculpture is, uh, you know, one percent and the rest of it's inspiration or perspiration or whatever that famous comment yeah, was. Yeah. Um, and so for me, um, painting, like I look at painters, there's not enough colours for me to start with. I, I paint, it's not an issue, but there's not enough colours. Right. There's not, the, pa the paper's not big enough, well the canvas is not big enough, and I can't go around the back, I can, but you know, it's just all those restrictions, right. which is what we just talked about in China, for me that in, in sculpture, you don't have that. You can yeah. go anywhere. You can add stuff to it. You can cut it down and start again. It doesn't matter. What's the biggest piece you've ever done? Um, <laughs> it's probably about eight metres tall, stainless steel. Is um, actually there's a work down in Melbourne that was went in about I don't know, maybe three years ago, um, which actually had three uh, elements or three different sections of it. Was they'd spent a couple of million dollars on a new railway station at Sunshine, which is yeah, had a pretty des bad reputation of the old railway station, so they spent a lot of money fixing it. And part of that was these um, 
the sculptural thing, which I thought was a really good work. Um, and it, one of them was five towers with these big polished mirror ball type things. They're not just balls, they were well and truly handmade parts, bits and pieces. But, um, and that reflected the environment, so people could walk underneath them and it's like, you know, convex mirrors. So you'd see little people walking everywhere and they could see the whole environment and the, and the top part of it would reflect the blue sky or the grey sky or the yeah. night lights or that sort of stuff. So, um, and, and it's interesting because people, this is the magic of sculpture, that people look at stainless steel, polished stainless steel and think it's silver. Right. But it's not, it's whatever the reflection is. Yeah. And, and yet our mind says it's silver. Right, right. Because <laughs> it is. Well, it's, you know, but it's not at all. It's that reflection. And that's, you know, I mean, the cameraman is just talking about he uses shadows for what he does. That's what I do. I'm looking for light and you know, reflections and all that yeah. sort of stuff. It help, sounds help like the, art has taken you all around the world. It has. Yeah, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. Do well, you ever run out of ideas? No. I know you don't, I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm asking for everyone at home. Oh, look, I, it, that's something. Um, but, but Can't keep up. Writers, how many writers? Oh, I've had a terrible day. Oh. I just couldn't get the third page. Oh, I opened the top, I got my typewriter. Not that at all, but it's just that sort of stuff. My, my, I actually have to keep a, a pad alongside my bed because generally about three o'clock in the morning, but not always, I'll wake up with these most amazing ideas. Just, wow, I've got to do that. And then they'll bother me all night, and so I only sleep for two hours instead of six or seven. That's what happens to me too. <laughs> That's right. Ideas. So, what, so what I do is I actually always, in the dark, write on, on this pad, you know, either draw it or write stuff or whatever to get that idea. Yeah. So the idea is, look, I, I, I could not, I know, I know I'm not going to live forever, but, <laughs> but forever wouldn't be long enough yeah. for me because I, I've got so much stuff I'd love to do. Yep. Yeah, can't keep up. Yeah, I drive my mad, well, my wife absolutely mad. You know, and, and, is she creative? She, an she is, she's an well. artist as well, but she's yeah. actually um, been over, overwhelmed by me. And she's a sculptor, she teaches with us in the sculpture classes, an incredibly important part of what I do too. Um, and But she, she doesn't really do too much art. My eldest daughter is um, a, quite a famous painter, although she studied sculpture at uni. But um, she quickly realised she couldn't make money out of it, so <laughs> started painting. But she's just been she's been in the wind prize three times. Um, she's got in it. She's had a baby each time she's had one. Thank oh. goodness she didn't have that. And that for women that actually completely destroys them for a while. Right. It, it is. I mean, I didn't, I've never had that. I've never had a break in my life where I can't be creative. Yeah. And I I feel for yeah. And and my wife also. She's. She's got this crazy idea that she should support me, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> <laughs> lucky but, you. I oh know, lucky me, but that, that's something that's really interesting is that you know, we go through our life um, you know, being, being supported or not. Yeah. Females really don't get supported in so many ways. Yeah. In, you know, don't start me on that. But oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> I'll get you back onto Art on the Coast. <laughs> okay. So yeah. what's it like exhibiting here? Are there um, enough venues? No, there's the venues. Um, there's some nice, good galleries here, but the the tra exhibiting in on the central coast is <coughs> not so much the galleries. It's the people around the place that go and look at them. They just go for the wine and the cheese, and you know people don't buy w art, which right. is such a shame. You know, you see, you go into a person's house. Not that I do this very often, but I'd go in and do to some ordinary person. I don't mean ordinary in a bad way, but a person who doesn't understand art, and they've got prints on the wall that they've got in Kmart. Um, right. They've got lamps that have been, you know, came out of Harvey Norman, yeah. and little sculpture things that have came from Bali, and you just look at it and think, oh God, you know, just, why don't you just buy one good piece of art from a local artist who's who you know and will it will just capture you, you know, the pe when yeah. like when people buy my sculptures, they get part of me and yeah. and they and I make sure they do. <laughs> I'm in their head when they leave and they never forget. <laughs> 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 but that no but that's all part of it, you know, because yeah. well, I'm making stuff that's unique to me only mm. and people can actually take a part of that away part of me away with them 
not this, you know, 12 million come out of China printed, you know, paintings. I just, I just don't get that. Yeah. It's such a shame because that culture, see, you know, Europe, for instance, when I was talking earlier, how that culture was, people were much more interested in, you know, real art. What's real art, I have no idea, but, but it certainly not comes out, doesn't come out of China by it's the not thousands. not mass manufactured. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And what would you say to an emerging artist or emerging sculptor? Never stop. Never stop. <laughs> Never stop. Be prepared for a million knockbacks. Right. But don't, but don't take it to heart. There's only one way to get on with this stuff. Follow your track, whatever yeah. you want to do. Keep uh, actually, it. this part of our classes is, is that really important thing, because if you go to a TAFE course at university, they actually teach you what's written down. You know, this is the line that everyone will follow. But 10% you know, of people will, will are born to follow that line. The rest of them aren't. And so they, yeah, we, we need this much more diverse way of, of educating people. So when people do their own art and get knocked back because people don't enjoy it, that's the best thing that could happen. I quickly realised when I was, I don't know, maybe 25, and I was exhibiting a, a bit of art and painting and that sort of stuff, some people would actually say, oh, I love your work, and some people would say they hate it, and some people would say that's nice. So, so what's interesting for me is that when people say that's nice, or you see them in a gallery and they walk past and go, yeah, and just walk past, they'll never look back. Right. And the people who walk into a gallery and go like that and, and have to go and look, they've, they're hooked. That's the end of it. They've, they, I'm in their head. And interestingly, that might be because they hate it or they love it. No, no, I don't. There's, there's two of the extreme emotions what I'm looking for. If people hate my work, 20, 30 years later, I've had people walk up to me, you're the bloke that did that woman with the tits that, excuse my language, that came out around the back. Yeah, that's me. I just, that was just horrible. How good is that, mate? I know, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he never got over it. Excuse my language. But, but that sort of stuff, I, mean, I, I, I made that up. But basically, yeah. it's that sort of thing where people, they have to get involved emotionally with the thing. So it's either extremely love stuff for whatever, no, it's certainly not just because it matches the carpet. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, and that sort of, yeah. so it's a cultural thing, really yeah. it is. Uh, interestingly, Sculpture by the Sea has actually changed my life. I've never actually been in it and probably won't ever even try because I'm too busy doing my own things. But um, it, it ha everyone knows about Sculpture in Australia, everyone, yeah. because of Sculpture by the Sea. It's one of the biggest shows, it might even be the biggest show in, in the world yeah. for Sculpture. Fantastic place, it has great art, art you know, from plastic to you know, bronze, whatever. It's got everything there. And so people in 15 years have, have all got opinions on Sculpture. Right. <laughs> they mightn't have... Um, educated opinions but they've all got opinions which is fantastic so the, that's breaking down these barriers where people you know, yeah. 25 years ago people wouldn't talk to me about my sculpture right now they just want to talk about it and, and have their opinions but it won't be you know, maybe another generation that will actually change and where people would value the fact that i'd made a really ugly sculpture <laughs> or a really beautiful one you know yeah. and i could do both of those and they could actually see that this is a person who creates things to tell a story. You know. Yeah, so, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's education of the masses, isn't it, as well? Well, it's really important. This yeah. one of this sculpture on the green thing I do is, is really important to me because it's, it's, there's so many um, sculptors on the Central Coast. Like, every second person is a sculptor. Right. <laughs> Maybe not, but, but there's a lot of us around. And so they don't have an opportunity. So they make one or two things and they love doing it and they just don't know how to go past that. You know, so that's it, they stop. And some people come to my classes and say, oh, I did something you know, 32 years ago or 10 years ago. And I just loved doing it, but I didn't know what to do with it, you know, sort of thing. And so that's, that's, that's got to change. You know? People have got to actually understand that that emotional outlet is really good. It doesn't matter what that is, yeah. writing, dancing, you know, being a prime minister. <laughs> really? But, <laughs> well, that's pretty creative. <laughs> What am I going to say now? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll stay on track with art. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> no politics. So, um, where was my... Do you have any gr regrets? Regrets? Yeah, yeah, life's too short. Right. That's probably it. <laughs> you know, I... I um, 
Uh, I can get cranky, but I, I really do feel I'm a very positive person. When I was at TAFE, my students used to call me Smiley. That's nice. <laughs> Which is, could have called me a lot of other things. But that, <laughs> year after year, my nickname was Smiley, and it didn't come because they knew you know, that it had gone. But, but, so I do I enjoy a bit of a laugh and a bit of humour. What do you think about education on the coast in um, visual arts and sculpture specifically? In schools? Or any private colleges? Any well, there's me. Uh, I'm fantastic. <laughs> no, there's a few people who teach um, art and sculpture. So, so the, the highest form for me is actually sculpture. Well, yep. it's actually one step above that, and that's drawing. Right. Okay, which is incredibly important to any art form. And whether it's drawing, if you're writing a novel, you still have to draw the novel to start with. Yeah. In you know, in brief comments and that sort of stuff. So that sketching process for me is the most important thing you could ever do in any any art form at all. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of places around that allow that to happen. I, I know um, the uni at Arimba um, does art stuff, but it's very, um, you know, there's not much there. Yeah. We often get uh, their, their students to come along for three or six months and uh, to tune their tune themselves up because they haven't had that opportunity to do it there all yeah. the time. But, yeah, you know, times to do two hours sculpture today. Good. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. In one day. <laughs> no, not going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, people. Some people need two years to think of an idea and to get it on there. And, and so right. in our classes, we develop this stuff. You know, if, if I see people really um, struggling with what it is they want to do. I'll encourage them to find all these other little things, you know, without them knowing. <laughs> right. I think it's their idea. But that, shh, don't say that. <laughs> but, uh, well, that's part of being a teacher, I suppose. But, um, but that stuff's really important because it, every little thing they do is increasing their esteem. Mm. And then they think, now I can do this big thing that I've been scared of or I couldn't understand how to do it, you know? And it's not me that does that, it's them. They, they just slot all the little bits and pieces together and all of a sudden there's a tunnel that they can go down. So what's next for you? Um, <laughs> I'm going to go sailing. Right. <laughs> I wish. I'm a, I'm a, I am a sailor and I used to spend a lot of time up in the Whit Sundays, like six weeks at a time on a boat for probably 15 or more years. And I stopped, I got so busy with my sculpture, I stopped, I sold my boat five or six years ago and I haven't been not near the water since really because I just uh, and I really enjoy making big sculptures I enjoy the the negotiations we have with people and okay yeah you know, I get shortlisted I go to country towns where they want a sculpture and it's just the most it's just it's the nicest thing to do because people open their hearts to you and, and say look we want a sculpture and we'd like it to represent this so I <laughs> go in all directions you know and they you know they they just like my wife often says, "How did you do that?" Because these people just, you know, it's them. It's just opening their mind. I don't do anything. I just, you know, light fires, and they, yeah, you know, that's just, it's just, and so we get all these people that we meet regularly. Like I get shortlisted, you know, half a dozen times a year at least, more, probably more, t more, twice as many as that, and um, and that requires me to go and meet people, committees. You know, um, talk about their stuff. Often, do I do a lot of um, I like going out to the uh, the community and getting ideas from them. And you know, not that I'm going to use them, but <laughs> but they think we are. Shh, don't say that. They feel like they've contributed. <laughs> well, it's, it is part. Of it. It, it, they yeah. have con uh, contributed. You know, cause yeah, because it actually mellows the way that I think. Because I, I I have to say this is something that's really interesting for me is that one of the w reasons I do get quite a lot of projects is that when I offer you a sculpture, that's not it. <laughs> it's going to change, and it's going to change because I've got to get community understanding, I've got to do a whole lot of things, make sure it fits in the site, all, all this sort of stuff. So, um, you know, the, the sort of sculptors, I know, and I know quite a few of them, most sculptors are really good, but most, there's a few around where they just arrive and say, this is what you're going to get. This is because I'm famous, this is what you get. And, and so people think, oh, he's famous, he must be good. But it's, you know, I call that plonk art, where people just come with this big knob thing that there's nothing to do with the environment, nothing to do with the community. Right. It's a, it might be a very beautiful sculpture, but it's nothing to do with what's going on. 
and so it's just plonk there and I just don't get that. <laughs> don't like that. Well, it's not yeah, personal. A, a development you know, uh, uh, with the classes, I'm forever telling people this is the development. You know, when you snap a bit off, that's good. That's the development. It'll make you force force you to find another way to use it, it or discard it, use it for another one, or you know, all that sort of stuff. So your mind should never stop that whole process of development in art, because mm. there's you know, like there is a word called compromise, and I often use that where you have to compromise your work and say finished. <laughs> I've got to walk away because I could keep developing it. <laughs> That's it. And only ever ends. make one in my life. <laughs> and when you're looking at art, are you looking, are you thinking it could be perfect or are you thinking it could be fixed to be better for next oh. time? For my art? Yeah. Or, or do you art? just think that's how it is? Um, look, I don't, I don't get too thingy about my stuff. <laughs> um, I have, you know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed by saying this, but I have a vision and um, and I draw my vision and remarkably most of my works end up looking so much like the sketch I've done it's uh, you know for me quite amazing because I don't go out of my way to do that right but the process I go through actually you know my first idea was the perfect idea <laughs> and I've got to try all these other things to make sure it works you know for me yeah so um I'm, I'm really interested in new innovations and um, different types of way artists all around the world. I spend a lot of time looking at art on the internet and that sort of stuff, and it's, that's fantastic because, yeah, you see people doing things that, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Have um, you worked with LED lights and things like yeah, that yeah, as well? The, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's, for, for me, that's a really good thing because it actually, you can in introduce shadows and colours and things at night. But yeah. Because, you know, sculpture in the dark's not real good. <laughs> Did you have something to do with Vivid as well? Um, I have actually. Yeah. I, I, I helped a guy to install a work and do a, make a work and we mucked around with it. But, um, and also when I was in China, I, I started to do a, a deal with a Chinese guy over there that was making the most impressive figurative works that like um, Madame Tussauds stuff, you know, just but a thousand percent better, just so good, but they're all, all um, silicon. Oh. And so they move, and I just started talking about uh, lighting them because I could see them being see-through and putting um, robotics in them because he had a little bit of robotics, but they were, uh, 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 you know, which is ah. you know, e e easy to change. And I just I started this conversation with this guy, and and so we had a probably twelve months we talked about what we were going to do, but um, it was too difficult to deal on the other side of the world, and still stay keep my artistic integrity intact yeah. <laughs> no I don't mean that well I do mean it about it was difficult very difficult to stay hold that control to keep it as, as an artistic vision rather than yeah. something that I could mass produce and yeah so I pulled out of that yeah, but yeah opportunity you know, but just, uh, life's, yeah. life's not long enough this is a pain <laughs> 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 Because you, you see this stuff, like I could have invested another five years in that guy and done some really amazing things, but still, I haven't got that time, unfortunately. <laughs> my my last question to wrap up is about your wife's opinion of junk. <laughs> I think that's cool. <laughs> well, my wife's opinion about everything is very important. <laughs> yes, dear. But no, she's a fantastic. Um, she's so so supportive. She, she gets cranky with me because I, I I think. Possibly because I moved too quick, and I'm, I, I suspect that my father was a gypsy, because I don't have any grounding anywhere. I can, I, there's nothing for me to think I'll be here tomorrow and over there the next day or whatever. But my wife needs a week at least to get that into a, you know, com be comfortable with any any changes that I make, even even what I want for lunch. You know? <laughs> and I don't want tomato. You just said you want to, but no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I joke about that, but um, yeah, there's different people. And so she, uh, she's incredibly supportive of She me. thinks it's a lot of junk, though? She thinks it's, well, uh, people probably can't see too much, but I've got, uh, this is my resource centre, and I'm serious about that because I could actually walk in here and I t said to you jokingly, I could make a rocket to the moon. I reckon I could get halfway. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I have I I've got it stashed in the back there. I've got these um, physical lumps of bronze that I I used to buy scrap, but I used to only buy scrap that I was in love with, um, and there's so, some of the commercial bronzes that are made are so exquisitely beautiful. You know, old tap fittings or ornamentation. You know, this is you just see them and you think, God, you couldn't get that made today. And so I've got a stack of these bronzes over there, which actually have had a massive influence on my design, you know, because they're just there, you know? Just, I never look at them, but they're there. You know? that's, that's part of my actual being, you know? Are you question. interested in recycling? Is that one of your main um, concerns? I've done or? that, I've done that, mm. but it's not. Um, all my works are recyclable and, and, you know, I talk about sustainability and it's very important in all the, or anything we do, really. Um, but as far as um, using junk in my work, I have one problem with that, and that is if you start with junk, you end with junk. Right. You know, garbage in, garbage out. And and for me, I want to leave a, a sculpture that will last a long time and people can see the quality that's in it. Um, and and uh, with my students, you know, they come and they say, oh, look, I'm a bit short on cash. And I say, well, don't, don't feed your kids this week. <laughs> and just lift your cane. Instead of making it out of something that's going to rot within you know, six months, let's get a, a material that is co going to cost you a little bit, but actually will last a long time. Right. And so that inten intrinsic quality that's in people, people understand that. They can't articulate it, but they really understand the difference between work that is, has quality in it and work that isn't that. You know? And it's, um, it's a confusing thing for the public. To, to deal with that. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Was there anything you'd like to add? Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you. You've been uh, with Tina A. Wake for the litmus test. We'll see you next time.